It might be the most fundamental question asked about any aircraft. How fast can it fly? In the fall of 1947, a bright orange aircraft screamed over the California desert faster than any plane had before, becoming the first manned aircraft to fly faster than the speed of sound. Huge leaps in aircraft performance took place as a result of World War II, promoting the myth of an impenetrable sound barrier. During the closing months of the war, the Messerschmitt Me-163 rocket fighter reached speeds just below the speed of sound, around 700 miles per hour. Britain showed great interest in transonic flight research, with the de Havilland DH-108 flirting with the speed of sound. In September 1946, it tragically broke up on a test flight, killing test pilot Geoffrey de Havilland, the son of the company's founder. The British Air Ministry then hired Miles Aircraft Limited to build a transonic research aircraft, the Miles M52, a bullet-shaped aircraft with thin, straight wings powered by a turbojet engine. Before it flew, the project was canceled, leading to the bankruptcy of the company. The United States also worked to solve the challenges of high-speed flight, with the military and the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics leading the way. Working closely with researchers at the Army Air Force Flight Test Division, a radical bullet-shaped aircraft evolved, remarkably similar to the canceled Miles Project. The plane would fly with a thin, straight wing, and the horizontal stabilizer would be placed high out of the wing wake. The stabilizer would use a different airfoil than the wing, allowing each surface to enter the transonic regime at different speeds. Critically, the stabilizer could be adjusted by the pilot in flight. The rocket-powered plane soon gained a name, the Experimental Supersonic One, or XS-1. Bell Aircraft won a contract to build the plane. A beefy control yoke gave the pilot leverage against high control forces, while pressurized nitrogen powered the flaps and landing gear. Remarkably, the XS-1 lacked an ejection seat. An XLR-11 rocket unit, built by Reaction Motors Incorporated of New Jersey, provided power for the XS-1. Four individual combustion chambers on the rocket could be toggled on and off in flight, giving the pilot a simple throttle capability. Spheres of nitrogen throughout the plane would pressurize the fuel system, eliminating the need for complex fuel pumps. Despite only allowing a brief two and a half minute powered flight duration, the motor was light, easy to maintain and reliable. A converted B-29 bomber carried the plane to altitude where it would be dropped for launch. Glide testing of the XS-1 took place at Pine Castle Army Airfield in Florida, flown by Bell test pilot Jack Woolhams. On January 25, 1946, Woolhams climbed into the cramped cockpit of the aircraft, dropping free of the mothership moments later. During his 10-minute maiden glide flight, Woolhams reached a speed of 275 miles per hour. Visibility problems on approach led to a landing in the grass several hundred feet short of the runway. The XS-1 escaped damage, though, and went on to fly nine more glide flights at Pine Castle, reaching speeds as high as 400 miles per hour. The XS-1 program then moved to Murak Field in California, where the dry lake bed offered plenty of elbow room for test flights, far away from curious eyes. Despite the remote location, press interest in the program was high, heightened by the myth of a sound barrier. A concrete pit allowed loading of the XS-1 into the bomb bay of the B-29, with facilities nearby to handle the liquid oxygen and alcohol. A nitrogen plant supplied pressurization gas. Bell pilot Chalmers Goodland, better known by his nickname, Slick, flew the first XS-1 flights at Murak. The team started with glide flights, increasing the amounts of propellant in the tanks to explore handling at different weights. Goodland pushed the XS-1 to Mach 0.75 on the first powered flight, climbing to 35,000 feet. Bell finished their flights by June of 1947, 
with the NACA and the Army Air Force eager to take over. Mindful of the historic nature of a leap beyond Mach 1, the Army Air Force wanted to have one of their own in the cockpit of the XS-1. Captain Charles Yeager, a World War II ace with extensive test flying experience, was tapped to fly the plane. Yeager's first glide flight in the XS-1 took place on August 6, 1947. Three weeks later, he flew his first powered flight, accelerating the plane to Mach 0.85 before slowing down for a series of stalls. On later flights, Jaeger tested different stabilizer settings, noting that certain positions offered greater control in the transonic region. In the midst of this activity, the U.S. Army Air Force became a separate service, the United States Air Force, setting the stage for the final push to Mach 1. On the morning of October 14th, a B-29 carried Jaeger and the XS-1 to a drop altitude of 20,000 feet. After release, Jaeger ignited the rocket motor and climbed to 42,000 feet, encountering some mild buffeting at Mach 0.93, after which the XS-1 surged beyond the speed of sound, topping out at Mach 1.06. Calling flight engineers on the radio, Jaeger noted that the Mach meter had gone screwy. The Air Force immediately declared a media blackout, quietly presenting Jaeger the Distinguished Flying Cross for his contribution. Also, the S was dropped from the aircraft designation, resulting in the simple X-1 known today. News of the flight soon leaked out, though, with Aviation Week publishing a recap of the supersonic flight in December. Finally, the Air Force confirmed the flight in June 1948. Inter-service rivalry led to an unusual flight in early 1949 as a response to U.S. Navy boasts that their D558-1 could reach supersonic speeds from a runway without the help of a launch aircraft. The Air Force team calculated that their X-1, with a light fuel load, could indeed take off from the lake bed for a brief supersonic flight. On January 5th, the X-1 lifted off after a short 1,500-foot ground roll, reaching 23,000 feet and Mach 1.03 just 80 seconds later. Pleased with the X-1 project, the Air Force contracted Bell to build a series of even more advanced research aircraft. The first of these next generation aircraft to fly was the Bell X-1D. This aircraft only flew once on an unpowered glide flight in July 1951. The X-1D suffered fire damage during the next launch attempt and had to be jettisoned over the Murak lake bed. The X-1A first flew on February 14, 1953. On a high-speed flight later that year, Jaeger had just passed through Mach 2.4 when the aircraft began to roll. Tumbling wildly out of control, he lost 36,000 feet of altitude in a matter of seconds. Jaeger's helmet smashed against the canopy frame, knocking him unconscious and breaking the canopy. Jaeger regained consciousness with the aircraft in a flat, inverted spin, but managed to recover for a successful landing. A post-flight investigation showed that the aircraft encountered a condition known as inertia coupling. Emphasis next shifted to high altitude rather than high speed research, and the X-1A reached a record altitude of 90,440 feet in August 1954 with Major Arthur Murray at the controls. On August 8th of the next year, the X-1A was lost to yet another pre-launch explosion and fire due to a faulty leather gasket. The X-1B was the next member of the family to take flight. Extended wingtips contained small hydrogen peroxide roll jets, providing control in the thin air at high altitude, along with pitch and yaw jets in the nose and tail of the aircraft. After cracks developed in the plane's liquid oxygen tanks, 
the X-1B retired to the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Where then is the X-1C? Although the Air Force signed a contract with Bell to design and build the X-1C, and even assigned a serial number to the plane, the X-1C program halted before construction even started. Following the retirement of the X-1B, only a single member of the family remained, the X-1E. The plane featured a low drag canopy, similar to that found on the Navy's D558-2, and finally added an ejection seat. The X-1E first flew on December 12, 1955, with NACA pilot Joe Walker at the controls, dropping from the very same B-29 that launched the XS-1 almost a decade earlier. The X-1E went on to fly 27 flights and is now on display at the NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base. Today, Jaeger's supersonic X-1 flies above the central gallery of the National Air and Space Museum, suspended next to Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis and above a replica of the lunar module that carried men to the surface of the moon. The engineers, scientists, technicians, and pilots who built and flew the X-1 created something more than a remarkable fleet of aircraft. Over more than a decade of flights, the X-1 fleet blazed a trail for every aircraft that has ever flown at supersonic speeds. The story of the X-1 not only helped forge the mythology of the American test pilot, but brought that image into reality.